Hello and welcome everybody to Sayonara Wild Hearts, a trans story. We will be going through this wonderfully and delightfully queer game and telling it, telling the story from a trans perspective. This game is fundamentally about transformative change. It tells a fool's journey through the tarot cards and there are many, many ways to interpret it. The most classic way that it presents in this story is breakup. But a trans story is a far more, um, is another way that is very well, very well presented and is what we're, we're going to tell. And we are incredibly, incredibly passionate about transformational change, whether it is um, gender transition or just leaving a bad relationship or any other thing in your life. So we care deeply, deeply, deeply about it. And we are super hyped that we get to talk about transformational change. So with that, Three, two, one, go. We will be watching all the cutscenes. Harmonious universe existed beyond ours when three divine arcana watched over it. But one night, a cursed arcana intersected the astral highways, and along with her star-crossed ally, she stole all. The divine trio started to fade. They created heroin in the shards of her broken heart and hoped that she would one day be strong enough to save their world. And here we start with an androgynous looking character, the fool, in, a, in baggy clothing. And we're going to get to watch her transformation. So we will admit that um, when we first st started playing this game, we got very bad vibes from the intro cutscene when it called Death a Cursed Arcana. We consider Death to be the, ver the most positive card in the game by far. Death represents change, and we are a huge fan of all sorts of transformational change journeys that allow you to find yourself and break down the barriers between you and yourself. There's nothing cursed about death. Death is the most powerful card, most powerfully positive card in the game. And through this, we realize that we have a deep spiritual relationship with death. Many people are afraid of death. We met death. We hugged her. We, we met death. We said hello. We hugged her, we cuddled her, and we welcomed her into our system. Death is wonderful and is a harbinger of transformational change. By removing, by removing the old, it leaves space for you to grow into something new. That is the power of the death card. And now you transform from an androgynous looking character into your super heroine self. So now we're going to go on a journey of facing five adversaries and a journey of transformational change. The first of these is the devil. The devil card traditionally has a devil sitting in the center with two people, humans, in the bottom corners with chains around their neck. Only, if you look closely, the chains around their neck are, are um, very loose. The people can walk away whenever they want. All they need to do is learn that they're allowed to walk away. That is the internal work that begins transformational change. You recognize that you can make the change. And the only thing holding you back is yourself. So this first this first chapter is all about just the full the full learning to recognize 
that she is allowed to transition, doing the internal work to know that transition is possible and it is an option. Such a beautiful use of Wheel of Fortune. Just a beautiful little motorcycle. The background of this game was they wanted to make a game out of the game to go with a pop album. And they did an excellent, excellent job. It starts off it starts off fairly slow, but then it starts to get much faster. It's just a Gorgeous, amazing game. Very queer. Highly, highly recommend. If you just want to, if you just want to play any percent, you can finish the game in about. You can finish the game in about an hour and a half. So we would highly, highly recommend that you get the game. So one of the things about the one of the things about the first um, segment is that the devil is you feeling trapped. So in general, all the streets are fairly narrow in, during the first chapter. So this introduces the so here are the dancing devils, the per, the personification of, of fighting yourself. And ultimately, the fool's journey is all about fighting yourself and overcoming yourself. Very short tutorial level. And this is where the game really starts to get real. The last uh, the last get level of every act has um lyrics to go with it. This is all a, this is a song about beginning again. And um because the because the devil makes you trapped. All the streets, all those, all the levels in here are incredibly narrow. This is the fool recognizing that transition is possible. And recognizing that starting over is possible. And that's such a powerful message. Starting, no matter how old you are, starting over is always possible. You can always Transformational change is always possible. And it's always about just doing what is right for you and becoming yourself, breaking down the barriers between you and you. And the first step to that is always just recognizing this is an option. And we absolutely love this. This is where the game just completely melted us. As the world breaks into pieces, the world just breaks into pieces and you get to fly over a beautiful fire In terms of what favorite level to watch, this is definitely ours. It's a little bit slow paced for playing, but in terms of watching, we absolutely, absolutely love it. And um, we really like the, how the theme of Begin Again comes. There are three dancing devils, and you begin again over and over and over. And that is simply the cycle of life. Transformational change, you transform. You change, you begin again, 
you recognize that something is not right. You transform yourself again and again and again. Our, we have a strong goal in our life to never stop having transformable, transformational change. Like, we are exceptionally passionate about transformational change, and uh, like, we will just keep transforming ourselves as needed. We will continue becoming ourselves. We will continue breaking down the barriers between us and us. No matter how many times you have to begin again, we will do it. Because we need to do what is right for us. We need to be ourselves. Begin Again is also a song about saying goodbyes. Goodbye to your past life. The internal mourning, the internal mourning of what you're going to give up by making, by transforming yourself. And in, and this hard process is just letting go of your previous life. And that's what allows you to have transformational change. And this is the very first step. Allowing yourself to see your options unchaining yourself from the devil removing the chain that, that which removing the chain that you placed around your own neck There we go, the first of five may axes complete. We have we have realized recognized that it's possible. Now now we get the next card, the moon. The moon stands for distortion and turning inwards. Now now that is now that transition is recognized as possible, the fool has to turn inwards and create the space and do the internal work required to pull off a to pull off transition. And each each harp each hack starts with a heartbreak segment, a dis very disor increasingly disorienting passage like that, which just represents what transformational change goes. The entire process is disorienting, but also incredibly beautiful, as you become yourself. The emperor the emperor leads the way. A beautiful use of using the emperor to lead the way for your internal journey. We do find these levels to be very disorienting, and definitely, um, we definitely consider these levels to be much harder to um, dodge obstacles in than most of the others. The controls just feel different. 
Which is very fitting for the man. And here we have the howling moon, the howling wolves. Howling moon, second of the two obstacles. This is an incredibly powerful level. This is very disorienting and this has this has definitely has um, aesthetic of psychedelics, especially with the mushrooms coming up. And psychedelics are can be an incredibly powerful tool. They are well known for forcing you to look at what you need to look at, whether or not you are ready. So they they can be a powerful tool for pushing along transformational change, and we choose to believe that the fool uses uses psychedelics responsibly as a tool to help her along her journey of transformation. So if you ever wanted to play a game with heart-shaped lasers, this is the game. We get to shoot heart-shaped lasers! How awesome is that? And now you get, now you get something to fight as part of your internal demons. Now we're on the final level of the Howling Moons. First person view controls very, very differently. And the, the song tells a story of being alone at night, which is, which is very, very fitting for turning inwards and doing the internal emotional work needed to build your, to create space for transformational change. This is a super powerful part of um, just, just like becoming yourself, breaking down the barriers between you and you. Becoming yourself, no matter what the costs are, just becoming yourself and allowing you to be yourself. You're not doing your stuff for anybody else. You're doing your stuff purely for yourself. And you are okay with being alone. Because you know that being alone gives you the in internal power to become yourself and to walk away from anything that you need to. Walk away from any ex expectations of anybody else that you need to.
Hop goes a howling moons. Now you've decided you've let yourself know that you can make changes. You've done the internal work needed to bring about transformational change and decide to transition. And now we have the tower. This is an interesting act. In every act, the first card the first card that you see is a card that you're fighting against. And the tower represents something that is not right. Something is not what it seems. And our interpretation is that the tower is that the tower is a primary card here, and that the lovers are simply a mechanism for which the tower acts on. The lovers are what you fight in this act, but the tower, the fact that something is not right with the lovers, is the core of this act. And this is a beautiful way to just use a tower in the game. The tower is, tower is represent, depicts some, somebody falling from grace. And it is the most destructive card in the deck. Now the now your adversary for this segment is the lovers. In the in the trans narrative, it could be, it could be a parent, or it could be um, a partner. In either case, this is this is someone who does not want you to change, and wants to be incredibly possessive of you. And the lovers represent choice, always as a pair. And you, ha you have the choice to go find your new path and to break down the barriers between you and you. Or to follow the person who wants to be possessive and prioritize their needs above your own. That is the choice. And the game very well, does a very great job of representing choices here. It's the first time that you really have choices in the game. Here's a single lover. You can see the duality in the mask already. I need to take the sword to slice the choices in half. And there's a duality of the stereo lovers. This segment is the one which confused us the most when we were trying to figure out what it meant, especially the song Mine, and it finally made sense when we figured out that there's a song that somebody else was singing to the full. And ultimately, it's the lyrics, the wild heart glitters, that gave it away, that made us figure out that it was actually being sung, or confirmed that it was being sung to the full. And they do a great job depicting duality here. This. This level um, fits so amazingly into the overall story narrative. We love this part. A transformation where you go from the lovers being in control to you being in control. 
It fits the narrative so, so, so well. And here is a song, mine. A possessive partner or parent or somebody in the fool's life does not want the fool to transition and wants the fool to be theirs. This is probably our favorite level to play. It is wonderfully fast paced and there's an amazing thing that comes with the beat coming up soon. That's just amazing, amazing, amazing. And the choices continue to be, the choices continue to be a core aspect of, the, of this entire chapter. This is the, our favorite part of the, of the game, we think. coming down to the rhythm is so 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 good so here the fool is trying to just decide to live for herself not for anybody else a hugely hugely powerful part just because there's almost always external people who do not want you to transform who would much rather you stay as you are. Because either because the change makes them uncomfortable or simply because they do they don't want to change have to change with you. They want you to remain static for their comfort and to give up being yourself. The next card is a Hermit. The Hermit represents turning inwards and just just isolating so you can isolating to make and doing the internal work needed to actually make the change. We find that isolation is a hugely important part of transformational journeys. Cuz the the isolate the isolation allows you to take it take space from the world. And just um see what you need for yourself. Take a break from the busyness of the world. Take a break from other people making demands of you. And just focus and just spend some time isolated trying to figure out what do you what do you actually want? What do you need from your transformative journey? What do you need to break? Who are you? What do you need to do to break down the barriers between you and you? <laughs> Whenever we've had transformative journeys in our own life, we've always spent a substantial amount of time just isolating and turning inwards and using that time to figure out who we are. And since we have a strong goal to never stop having transformative journeys in our entire life, we will continue. We will continue to isolate as needed to make sure that we can figure, make sure that we have time to figure out who we are. like how this level gives the idea gives a feeling of just going for being alone in the middle of the desert and it's a really cool use of the chariot too
And we, re we really, really like how um, they use the world here. Just... The world and the, and the idea of turning inwards. Using VR. This is a very, very quiet level. Very uneventful. Which accurately represents um, turning inwards and just moving at a much slower pace. Taking a step away from the business of the world. And using that time to um, just figure out who you are. What you want from life. What you need. What you need to become yourself. We love how they just stack stage after stage after stage, and ev like everything with the entire feel of this of every level fits into the overall narrative. It is so 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 good. And the game is truly exceptional. We super appreciate how, like, we can, um, we can come in here into this game at a moderate energy level, and then, the, and then the idea of transformational change is just so powerful that, um, it sucks us into a very passionate transformation. This, this game does it. This game does it. This game is amazing on so many levels. Whether it's, whether it's a trans narrative, or simply um, just going through a breakup, or any other type of finding yourself, this game tells a beautiful, beautiful story that we deeply, deeply adore. So this song is the is, um, counterpoint of Begin Again. Just the full the full feeling too exhausted. Too exhausted, too old to make any changes. And this is something that everybody experiences with transformational change. Just there's always a part of it is Am I too old for this? Are we too is it is, are we too tired for this? Do we have it in us to cha keep changing? And the answer is always yes. Yes. For as long as we live, we're going to continue making transformational change. We could be 90 years old, and we still want to continue to find ourselves. We still want to continue to change and become ourselves. We will never stop that process, and that is beautiful. This is us and us. And nobody can take that away from us. I'll take it. I'm speaking again. I'll take any fragments I can find. The exhaustion. Exhaustion and not being sure that you can make it. But the answer is that you can always make it. You can always make it. And it's always so worth it afterwards. You have a whole life ahead of you. Continual transformational change. Continually becoming yourself. That is the life goal.
it is too late. It is never too late. Become yourself. Become yourself. Become yourself. Become yourself. And now we now we face the final challenge. Death herself. The star the star will guide you. The star will guide you through uncertainty. And the last obstacle, death herself. Change herself. As a fool, you've you've done the work you've done the work to realizing that change is possible. You've done you did the internal work needed to create the space for it. You did the work walking away from a parent, a lover, somebody who wanted you to be theirs and not yourself. You've done all the work. You've turned in you turn inside. And taking the time to just sift through your mind. You've done all the work. Now all that's needed is to let it's to face change herself and accept and actually implement the change. The fool is so close to her transition. One final obstacle. most powerful most powerfully positive card in the deck death an absolutely absolutely amazing card and our favorite we are a goddess of death we have a deep spiritual relationship with death and have had for most of our life we are an agent of change we will keep transforming our life over and over and you will help those around us who wish to transform their life do so. That is our role as a death goddess. Now this next bit is the at the dev suggestion. Pikachu! love the energy that just comes with each of the levels in, in the little death segment. Like, the little death segment just has a sort of energy that none of the rest of um, the game carries. Which makes sense. Death is such a powerfully action-oriented card. You get a little cute bow and you get to shoot lasers. This is actually a really neat time to introduce temperance.
And there is little Death herself. Beautiful, beautiful creature. Guiding you to let go of the past and create the space for your transition. For any transformative change you want to make. Every Death Goddess needs a super cool sight. It's Charlie and his milkshakes, and it's Carly and its heartbreaks. A ton of, a ton of evidence that um, the trans narrative was very intentional here. This level is super, super fun to play. It's nice and fast paced, has a nice speed to it, and it has a little death with a super cute scythe. What's not to love about it? We just love the aesthetics of this level. I'm not sure that there is any significance of death using the sun. We've always interpreted that as the sun just being conveniently shoved into the game at that point. Now you're past death, little death, the little eye that represents of everything combined. You face to everybody as your superheroine self. Now you need to face all of this as yourself. The final obstacle before you transition or any other transformational change is complete. I feel like the beat that's here really fits this, really fits the finale quite well. And we love that the la even the laser shots go to the music. We are super huge fan of games with amazing music, and like 
Especially games where the music was made first. This and Toho are the only games that we know of where the music was made first. And both of them are absolutely, absolutely amazing. And if anybody knows of more games where the music was made first, we would love to hear them because we want to play them. the music and the way everything fits together as music gives us a really good feel of an epic finish. Now you get to face all five of the obstacles as yourself, not as your superhero and self. The final step, just being yourself, facing these obstacles, and preparing yourself for your transition, your transformational change. And instead of and instead of destroying each of them, you kiss them. You've made peace with all of them. And now you're making peace with yourself. It's such a, such a little powerful little thing that finishes off the game. We adore the heck out of this game. It's so good. As an added bonus, you get to break down the barriers between you and your dragonkin self. Such a wonderful, wonderful ending to the game. And through the, wind, the, words the, the emotional journey that this game just takes you to is incredible. And we love that we can just play it over Every time we return to it, we just end up exceptionally passionate about it. It is so, so, so good. And you returned right back where you started, as yourself. Your internal journey is complete. Now all that's left to do is to return to the external world and complete the process.
we ended up astonishingly clo close to a gold rank. For how long ago, how little we played this game recently. There was a young woman who fell out of love, asleep, away with it. For years she held in spirals of sadness and anger until she could not find any joy and fell right back into her bed. Transition complete. Cute girl. And this completes the transformational journey. The fullest journey. The story that this game tells is beautiful. Whether you look at it through simply a loss of a loss of a partner or transi gender transition or any other like transformational change in life. It tells a story that this is possible. Anything that you want is possible. You can become yourself. You can break down the barriers between you and you. Transformational change is a lifelong journey. Constantly figuring out who you are. Looking back every couple years and being able to say, I know myself much better than I used to. Never stop growing. Never stop changing. Life is about journeys. Transformational change. Becoming yourself. And that is something that we are pa super, super passionate about. And we just have the biggest smile on our face because of it. And yeah, thank you everybody so much for watching this. This has been wonderful getting to do this.